about you. So right. if if you post something and it doesn't receive well, it doesn't matter. Then that one didn't move on. And that's it, it's it's very hard because we as human beings hate rejection and we fear the rejection from just being ourselves. And I I understand that fully. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Stream Key. How are we doing? And we have Jambo. <laughs> Jambo's here, in case you guys didn't know. Um, so, yeah, welcome to another episode of Stream Key. Uh, we got Sodomi, as always, as the co host. What's up, Sodomi? What's up? We're going to talk about some yeah. cool stuff today, aren't we? Uh, nope, we don't talk about cool stuff here. Uh, Mr. Right, Pure then. Instinct, as well. You guys remember him from last week and a bunch of weeks prior to that. MPI, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, man? And then we got Play with Jambo, who's a new guest on the show. And uh, yeah, Jambo. Yeah, I just started streaming, so this is really weird for me. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people in here that obviously know who Jambo is. Um, but for those of you that do not, Jambo, you want to give us a little little rundown of who you are and what you do? Um, yeah, I'm a variety streamer on Twitch, obviously. Um, I've been streaming for about two and a half years and um, talk about poop a lot. All right, that sounds very enticing. All right, uh, Mr. Pierre Instinct, for those of the viewers that don't know, you want to talk a little bit about I, yourself? I got to follow that up. Dang. Man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so my name is Mr. Pierre Instinct, or as a lot of you guys know me, MPI. Uh, I'm a variety caster on Twitch as well. Play a ton of story games. Recently started playing some older games that I've never played before, like Skyrim. And oh, wow. uh, we drink a lot of coffee. We talk about mental health and we have a lot of fun. Dope, dope. Sodomi, my guy. I'm Sodomi the homie, and I spend way too much time doing research and talking about stream stuff. Oh my I spend more time doing research about it than actually streaming. So. What a nerd. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> researching and stuff. And I'm Veloc. I, uh, I, I, play, I play video games on the internet. There's this website called Twitch. You probably haven't heard of it. And uh, I stream some video games there. But and uh, we're we're but not now. We're doing a show. This is called Stream Key. <laughs> so uh, just to start off with some stuff. First topic of the day is Overwatch League, Call of Duty League, and Hearthstone Esports are going to air on YouTube instead of Twitch from now on, um, which is kind of crazy because that's going to be a huge hit to uh, to Twitch. Obviously, uh, starting with Sodomi, what do you got on this topic, my guy? So. I I, I want to know if this is just one general acquisition YouTube's going to do, or if they're going to try and focus on capturing the live event marketplace. Because again, YouTube, we've talked about this plenty of times, they have the, the, one of the largest user bases in the world of anything. So having, having a big event user base, sorry, having a big amount of events is probably better for them as a whole versus getting a bunch of smaller streamers. But I still want to see what they're going to do going forward. I mean, again, I say it all the time. YouTube's going to dominate the. They're going to be Skynet for content in a few years. It all depends on when they pull the trigger. This is this for me. Them is them loading the gun up. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Play with Jambo. Well, I would like to know how much money YouTube spent to get the contracts for Overwatch because I know that Twitch spent a buttload of money mm -hmm. to have the rights to um to those seasons. Not to mention all of the contracts that YouTube's been signing for individual partners like Courage and um, uh, Ray. Mm -hmm. I, I I do think it's a good idea for them to be chasing games themselves and um, and leagues and different competitions because it's not going to be enough to hold the attention of viewers just by having individual streamers who have individual communities. The community for games themselves are much more vast um, than than that of no matter how big courage and valkyrie are they're not like i don't watch them so there's no reason for me to watch youtube mm -hmm. so i i i don't know i think it's not going to last i give it maybe until next year but i don't think twitch is going to let that sit for the rest of time i think they're going to come back yeah they definitely could they definitely could um mm -hmm. mpi yeah i mean it it makes a lot of sense to me that they would move into this space because I think we've talked about this multiple times. The guy that runs YouTube gaming came from the call of duty scene. Mm -hmm. Like that was what he did. He was a caster for the call of duty scene for a long time. So now seeing him in charge of YouTube gaming and being like, Hey, we need these esports events. Cause he saw them from, you know, when they were in, 
tiny, tiny like hotel ballrooms up to multi million dollar stadiums now. So it makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. But I, I think, I mean, like Jambo said, this isn't going to, Twitch isn't just going to be like, okay, man, I guess you can just have it. Like they're going to come back and it's going to be a fight, I think, to start trying to get these things to sign longer contracts on platforms. Right. Um, I'm interested in the last. Uh, paragraph in this where it says that uh, the two Activision games are going to be ran on Google Cloud. Um, did we see how Stadia did? I, 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 well, Stadia I is Stadia is not really how can I put this? I think Stadia will be the future. Just it's just not right now. But yeah, but if I'm putting think, like Google has so much money that it's irrelevant like how popular it is they can buy its popularity if they need to oh yeah i'm more concerned with i'm playing for millions of dollars and now i have input lag that wasn't there before (laughs) or we have a multi-million dollar tournament on our hands and we just drop connection from that cloud Mm -hmm. um it it was a big problem in the halo scene where halo 5 didn't have lan still the dumbest thing i've ever heard and there was a tournament where multiple people just lost connection in the middle of the match. And they're like, sorry guys, there's nothing we can do about it. So it's like adding one more piece of the internet that can disconnect in there. Doesn't feel like a good idea to me. Right. I mean, I'm not a a network engineer or anything. So maybe, I mean, I'm sure they have a couple ideas that I don't have, but I don't know. It just seems like why, you know, add one more thing to it for something that isn't broken. Like, just right. put the disc in the PlayStation and let me play it. <laughs> Especially yeah. before it's been like really stress tested the way that it should be for something like that. Since it is like multi million dollars on the line. Yeah. You yeah. Like, this like isn't, saying. yeah. This isn't, you know, like an $8 game battles thing that I'm playing. This is, you know, mm-hmm. the Call of Duty League where people are going on to be world champions right. and make millions of dollars and have millions of dollars in sponsorships. So, it's a little bit of a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Can, can we also talk about just player salaries and esports right now too? Dog shit. Um. So, I think I feel like there are players being paid a lot of money for, and not that they don't deserve it. Just that I'm not sure if esports brings in that much to justify all of them right now. I, I think, think a lot of it is sponsorship. Yeah, I didn't think the esports players were actually making that much money though, compared to like what they could be making. So, you know what I mean? It depends yeah. on a lot of things. I think like it depends on the organization you're in, how big you and the organization are, and the sponsorships you have. Like, I mean, look back at uh, Optic Gaming a few years ago, where they had Turtle Beach, Turtle Wax for cars. Um, what else did they have? They had Brisk Tea. And like and scuff and a few other things, and they that was enough for them to live in basically a mansion in the suburbs, and all of them to be making a ton of money, plus prize money on top of it, plus money from streaming, plus money from YouTube. So it was the salary was bare, like kind of base, and then it was okay. Well, now we also have sponsorships, so you get sponsors on top of it. You make money off your sales of your scuff controllers. So it's it's more than just like, hey, here's millions of dollars. It's it kind of is a bunch of things coming together in one. It's almost like investing. So you have multiple investments in different types of businesses. It's not just, I don't know, suddenly I have a billion dollars. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so with all that going on, that that could be really interesting. And obviously Twitch is gonna make a huge or take a huge hit for it. Um It'll be interesting to see because YouTube has like 200 million daily active users, uh, but obviously not all of them or most of them are not watching the live content on YouTube. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see like how many of those viewers and viewers, users actually convert over to the live content and uh, see if it's actually worth it for YouTube. Sorry about that. Um, so next topic we have is streamer Indie Fox explains one of her biggest problems with Twitch viewership culture. She explains things like if she wears a t-shirt instead of, you know, a low cut shirt, she drops down from like eight or 900 subscribers to about 300. She also loses viewers and, uh, you know, just obviously there's so many negative things that come along with this. And uh, I guess we'll start off with, uh, with Chambo here. What did you, what do you have to say about, about what she so was talking I, about? I saw this. Um... And I, 
to a point, I think that that <clears throat> she's correct. I, I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people think it's very easy for women to grow on Twitch because of um like sexuality and a lot of people do equate the two, but that's not majority of what you see on Twitch. And it can be a lot harder for women to grow because of the lack of respect from a lot of uh, or, or some men on the platform. I don't want to say a lot of because it's definitely not all. I, I it's very it's very difficult and um the community can be kind of brutal on on twitter um toward women specifically for what they wear but to a point there are those people that go on twitch and look for the women who are dressed a certain way and do pay money for that so it's this kind of weird it's like a struggle and like a power struggle between the different kinds of female streamers alone mm -hmm. on Twitch. What I don't agree with is that that is the way to grow because in, I, I have grown on my own wearing nothing but hoodies, no makeup covered in blankets from head to toe. And I've been able to make what I feel is a small start of a name for myself. And I, I don't equate less clothing to more subs. I think that your content will always speak for itself and that blaming it on attire is not the way to fix a problem. I think a lot of people also struggle with um, taking a deep look at what they're doing with their content and what can be better. And it takes a very strong person to sit down and say, well, this just isn't working. I need to do something else. It's very easy to place blame on something simpler, like the shirt that I was wearing today didn't work. I I don't know. I feel like there is a point to what she says, but there's also a much broader problem that a lot of streamers don't address. And I think mm -hmm. that constructive criticism from ourselves is where it has to start. So I I'm not sure. I I'm kind of in the middle on it, I guess. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Good points. Sodomi. So when it comes to anything, the market will decide what it wants to watch, what it wants to buy, what it wants to proceed. So there are people on Twitch who do enjoy content that is more sexualized in nature versus content that is not. And not that's not also exclusive. People can like both kinds of content in different time spans, different time slots. Okay. But going to the major issue, women are treated like shit on the platform. And that's just everyone can agree with that. You cannot you cannot deny that. If you I've never had to ban as many people in any of my male friends chats as much as I did in one of my female friends chats. And God forbid you are a woman who is well endowed and just you, you just like that. It is horrible. And I think it's just a, it's not a Twitch issue. It is a gaming community issue, a gaming community issue. Mm -hmm. If you go into any game, the minute I know so many women who don't even use voice chat because the minute they do, they're just like, oh, hey, I can't wait to come and sexually assault you. <laughs> and it's like, like, bro, what the hell? Like, if you wouldn't say it to someone's face, why would you say it online? Obviously, because you know anonymity of it. And mm -hmm. to another point there, I think everyone should tidy up on stream a little bit. Like, don't go look like a hot mess unless that's what you want to do as part of what your content is. Personally, just because, you know, it's there forever. You don't want to get one of those really bad screenshots of like you, you know, looking like a... But it's... I think as a, as a culture, we all need to stand up and just kind of respect women more. And not only that, just call out those who are being complete total asshats about it. Because quite frankly, I've... And this is something I'm actually really passionate about because I have a lot of female friends and I've had to deal with people telling me stuff and I just really, really cannot stand blatant sexism, blatant misogyny, blatant just generalizations. And in other words, I just want the, the whole gaming community be, to be better because I'm ashamed that I have to talk about this every time the topic comes up. Every time. I've never had anything good to say about people, how they treat everyone. People of color, people of different races, people of different religions, and people with different genitals. Amen. Or people who admit or any a different kind of gender, whatever. Okay, like, I'm here to play games, talk extremely fun topics, and just be around cool people. And that has nothing to do with how you look or what genitals you have, what gender you go by, what color your skin, or religion you go to. So gaming community, just in general, be better and stop being crabby. Absolutely. MPI? I like what Sodomi said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it really hits the nail on the head, man. Like, yeah. it, it, that kind of like bronzes it up a little bit to talk about beyond Twitch because that's mm -hmm. not all Twitch is, is gaming. But I, I, it's something that 
I see all the time on like Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. And it's whether it's about your, your gender, your sexuality, the color of your skin, your religion, you know, whatever. Why? Why right. can't you just let people be people and do what they want to mm-hmm. do, man? It's not that hard. If you're going to be a jerk about it, then uh, jump into the sun. We don't need you here. Um, cool it, man. It's not that hard. But it's just, I guess kind of like specifically talk more about like the way that she dresses uh, equating to more or less subs. I think I kinda, I'm kind of in the same boat as Jambo. Like yes and no. Unfortunately, that that does happen because that's what people come looking for. Whether you think that's, you know, it's okay that somebody dresses that way on stream or not is irrelevant. That's something that happens. And it can mean that if she, you know, one month decides I'm wearing nothing but turtlenecks versus low cut shirts. Yes, those people who came looking for that are going to leave. But that doesn't mean that you're making bad content. You can still be making good content or look at it and go, okay, this, I did this and that happened. I don't want to grow just because I wore a low cut shirt. I want to make something that people enjoy and is legitimately good content and adding something to the world. Where can I grow from there? And that's going to go, you know, take those subs back up. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's, so true because yes you may gain more subs but what is the community that you're trying to build if that is the kind of support that you want from that group of people no no shame in that like if that's what you like on twitch that's what you like on twitch but if you don't like that that's the case then is that the kind of attention you want to attract there's so much that goes into it and really i don't know if this is going to be an unpopular take on this but she's doing more harm than good yeah by by bringing this up and agreeing that it's a problem because she is adding to that over sexualization of success that I feel isn't it isn't necessary. It's already <clears throat> so prominent in the sexism that exists on Twitch, highlighting it and and maybe blaming it for sub drop is making the problem more prominent, not helping it change. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's it's a it's a really slippery slope with with conversations like this discussing it like we are and and discussing the changes that can be made is one thing but discussing it and blaming it for a drop in your viewership or monetary gain mm-hmm. is highlighting the problem and not solving it because that's not there are a lot of people who do struggle to grow on Twitch but it's for a multitude of reasons it's not it's not because you don't have boobs. It's it's <laughs> it's it's for it's for something else. And I think it's so easy for people to blame the big highlighted issues that everybody always talks about, rather yeah. than really like what it comes down to is there are over three million streamers on Twitch, three million, and that's there. There's like six hundred thousand something that are that are sub enabled. You're competing with a lot of people for attention. And there are people who are going to like content that you just don't make. And that's okay. Like there are people who do like the content you make. It's no one's fault. Wear whatever shirt you want. I don't give a fuck. If you're funny, I like you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah you, I, think- I don't remember oh. how long ago it was, but do you guys remember it was I'm pretty sure we talked about it on this show at one point where there was someone who was throwing a hissy fit that people were stealing his views and subs and he couldn't pay for his kids college because of it. Yep. That's the ninja or something. Probably. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But I feel like that same thing is part of this too, Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. so many people are going to look at it and go, Oh, well that girl only has so many viewers because you know, she has some cleavage out. Yep. Sure. That might be part of that viewership. But at the same time, they could also be the funniest person you've ever met. And right. you're just not as funny as they are. Or, you know, whatever part of their content is still possibly better than yours. You can't just look at it and immediately go, boobs, that's what it is, man. <laughs> there's there's so much more to it than that. Like, right. you can't say that. Oh, if, well, she has boobs. She stole all my viewers, dude. What, what am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is a huge issue with the culture of Twitch. I mean, not everybody, obviously, but there is a huge issue with, you know, with everything that we're discussing and it's not just viewers it's also streamers like like we're explaining about indie fox i think that 
what really changes the the culture of Twitch is the streamers themselves. So yeah. I think if she would have taken a different approach at this, like Jambo was saying, it could have been a lot better. It could have changed a lot of people's opinions instead of blaming the problem. Like you could do things to like to fix yes. that problem. Like if you don't want to like be known for wearing a low cut shirt, then just don't wear a low cut shirt. There's no issues with either side. Mm-hmm. But if you can't just blame an issue and then just proceed to keep catering to that issue, it doesn't yes. it doesn't do anything. It's not progressive at all. So as much as you want to complain about it, the viewers aren't going to change their minds because you're just talking shit about this topic. But if you start bringing right. up the positives that you could be doing, that's what kind of rallies people to start bettering the platform and the culture in general. So it starts with a streamer and then the viewers will start to see that, you know, maybe this person's right. Maybe we should change our attitude a little bit. And then it just grows from there. Right. But the moment you have a big voice echoing the problem loud enough, it Mm -hmm. doesn't solve anything. And that's that's where and then somebody mentioned cancel culture and chat. And this all kind of flows into that, because the minute that you get um, a high influencer voicing an opinion, it's it's all downhill from there. And it is a slippery slope. Cancel culture is one of those things that it just it just breaks the entire system. Mm -hmm. And I feel like kind of. Kind of along with this, it might change the subject a little bit. I apologize. No, do it up. But I I feel like we have to, as a community and as a platform, find the balance between cancel culture and holding people accountable. Because mm. I feel like as soon as people start posting that something needs to change, immediately it's like, oh, the, that's you're trying to cancel them. No, we're addressing a problem, and they need to be held accountable for what they did. But like, but, but people, you know, got the white knights of the internet and the keyboard warriors that it, they're like blind to whatever somebody does. And I just feel like something in there has to change. We have to be able to hold people accountable. Alinity threw her cat at her ceiling and people were like, no, that's fine. Right. Stop trying to cancel her. It's not canceling. It's don't fucking do that. And somebody needs to tell you not to do that. Right. And I think that's. That's a big problem, and I don't know how. How do you guys think that there is a balance to that? Sam, so I'll start with this: Can- cancel yeah, culture is this very weird thing people like to do, where everyone likes to push their agenda first and foremost. There's no if you ever you ever do anything, you ever take any action, is for a reason. Whether you think it is altruistic or whether deep down it's really not. Cancel culture is very, I think it's very dumb in, in, in a complete sense. People can change, people have changed, and times change. For instance, a lot of us in the gaming culture said a very homophobic slur a lot back in the day. I was one of those people. So, would should I still not be allowed to do anything now, even though my stance has changed drastically? No, I think that's not right. But again, I do agree to hold people accountable. Mm-hmm. But with how fast people change and how people, how much things have changed on the, you know, not only just the internet culture itself, but just how the internet changes itself. Right. I think we should give a lot more lenience to people. 100%. But definitely understand that, like I said, things like things change. People happen. Mm-hmm. Humans are the smartest, dumbest creatures in the world. Amen. L- Give every, I think everyone deserves a second or third chance. And some people will not change, but if we do not allow people to change or we give the fear of cancel right. culture, they'll just double down harder. Yes. Because right. if, if, if I get punished, and I'm going to speak from a perspective of somebody who would have been canceled, if everyone's just telling me how much of a horror person I am, well, why am I going to make an effort to be better if everyone's going to think that anyway? I'm going to double right. down and at least have some fun with it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's Sorry. what I mean, like holding people accountable, not 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 canceling and removing somebody's chance to grow, but they need to know that they did something wrong so that they can change. But if people just right. defend them blindly because they support this person on Twitch or they're a really big name that they, that they don't need to be held accountable and because they are so big, anything they do doesn't matter. That is where I think the problem starts, because if you've screwed up, let's say you do something super shitty three times, all three times you have your community blindly defending you, even though you blatantly did something wrong, you're not learning. You're being taught that that behavior is okay because of who you are. And that, that is where I feel the line needs to be drawn. You need to be held accountable and you need to acknowledge your mistakes and then 
we can move on. Like issue an actual apology for something you do wrong. Not sorry I got caught being a jerk. Right. Like, now the issue comes to what determines what is right or wrong in someone's eyes. Like what I could think is horrible, someone could think is, you know, that's not a big deal. People do it all the time. Yes, but I think I think with a platform that is so diverse, I, I feel like that that's also why Twitch has so much trouble um, enforcing their own rules because there is such a difference between individual people of what's right or what's wrong. But I think that in a, in in a time like we are in now in in 2020, on a platform where there are so many diverse people, any kind of hatred should not go unacknowledged or unpunished or unacknowledged. If you're throwing around hate at any group of people, I feel like that's a hard, that's a hard line. There's no, I get that, that there are different sense of humor among people and what you do, like in your own time, where, wherever you are with your friends or privately, whatever you want to do, fine. I can't, I'm not a part of that, but if it's going to be live on a platform, if it's going to be berating someone on a Twitter post, you have to be, you have to be responsible for what you say and be able to back your words up and be mm -hmm. proud of who you are when you're in this community because there are so many people who end up feeling like they don't matter or something is wrong with them and that's not okay either. So I think there is there is a struggle in finding a balance between right and wrong, but I, I also feel like there is a line somewhere that we all can agree this is not okay to exclude anyone in right. a community. Mm -hmm. And so your point there brings up the best point I love about the internet and also the worst part about the internet. We have so many different mixing cultures and mixing backgrounds and ethnicities and just learning experiences that it's impossible to truly make one like generic this is right this is wrong yep about um anyone's like actions but because of that we should also impact the cancel culture allowing people to make those mistakes that they may not think are mistakes and kind of educating them versus just k killing them down and just making them to be the worst enemies the worst villainous people in the world this allows them to learn and not just go into defensive because when you ever corner any animal and yes humans we are animals we go into fight or flight and either mm -hmm. we will fight or we will flight we will either run or we will clap back we will tweet or we will delete our twitter account <laughs> and we've seen all of these happen and yeah we, the best we just need to have this people learn and change not necessarily strike them down and force them to change but let them change on their own through Agreed. what they see in their education this is an ever-changing platform, an ever-changing community, and people should be allowed to to change with it and grow with it and learn from the mistakes that we make. People should be allowed to make mistakes, but but they should also know that that depending on what you like what you say matters and your words carry weight on a platform like this. And in a moment where anything can be clipped and shared in 3 seconds, you do have to be able to back yourself up and and be able to acknowledge if you make a mistake i have so much respect for people who make a mistake and own up to it and and we all move forward like i get hard over that shit good for you proud of you and i i wish that that was more existent than it is and it is getting better honestly like a year ago i mean streamer twitter was like a desert wasteland and now it's it's at least there's a tree somewhere so i i think that we're making progress and i'm i'm really glad and I, I agree with everything you're saying. Like, that's, that's exactly it. We have to be able to grow without the fear of rejection from millions of people that don't even know who we are. Right. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, if you, if you would have gone to one of my streams back when I first started, like, I, I'm a totally different person. Like, I was saying things that, like, I would not think are acceptable today. Like, and had I been, like, canceled before that, or before I was able to, like, figure out, like, hey, maybe I shouldn't say these things. Like that wouldn't be here right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, you definitely just need to get people like that time and like, obviously hold them accountable. Like everybody's been saying, uh, yeah. Like Susie says in the chat, I was very different back then. Uh, very, very different sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. You guys all made really good points about that. Anybody else got anything on this topic still? MPI, are you still here? Yeah. I, I think, um, <laughs> one thing that I noticed in chat that they're talking about is like, everyone has to be held to the same standards too it doesn't matter if you have one viewer if you have one million viewers everyone can 
have space to learn and grow. But if the one person viewer, you know, says a racial slur, they get banned. The one million person viewer could say it and they won't get in trouble at all. Mm-hmm. That's where we, I think, we, they, again, they still don't need to necessarily be canceled immediately, but Twitch needs to go, hey, you know, dude, you literally broke a rule that we have written that you agreed to. I, I got to put you, you know, in timeout. Like, it's not like they're completely saying, I'm throwing you to the lions and you're dead now. It's, no, man, you just can't stream for a couple days. Like, right. take that time, reflect on what you've done and why you did it, and learn from it. And then if that person continues to do that, then yes, eventually we do need to say, sorry, you got to go. Right. And I, I have a few people in mind, but I don't want to stir up controversy just because of things. But um, do it. I, I mean, I'll, the biggest <laughs> one I can think of, honestly, dude, is PewDiePie. Yep. Oh, How many times has this dude said the most racist or done the most racist outlandish things? And people are like, nah, dude, he's cool. Don't worry about it. It's just, <laughs> it's just him being right. him. No, he's a racist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh. and that's the biggest one I can think of that people just blindly will follow off a cliff and defend to the end of the world. Like if I, I like I will see it on Reddit all the time. Somebody would be like, Yeah, but PewDiePie was a racist and they're like, Four million down votes, I know where you live, I'm gonna kill you and your cat and I'm like, dude. I've already <laughs> taken you. <laughs> all you have to do is look at it. Like, how are you gonna defend that? It drives me insane. But it, it doesn't matter if you're PewDiePie or if you're UDP trying to copy his name with one viewer. UDP. <laughs> Whichever one, like, if Is you're both... <laughs> Probably. I don't know, dude. People <laughs> blindly Did follow this man. To UDP? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, the point stands. It doesn't matter how big you are. You need to be held to the same standards. If I went in the bathroom and filmed like Dr. Disrespect did, I would never be allowed on the internet again. Dr. Disrespect did and everybody thought it was funny. Well, like He got banned for a few days yeah but yeah dropping the if i had done that, I, that they would have right. twitch would have flown here and taken away my router my computer and your bathroom and yeah it probably threw it all in the river and just went i don't know dude get out Long just eat the toilet <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so and with that too i think there's something that is really hard to express on twitch it's equality versus equity so yes i think everyone should be held to the same standard but that standard does change for a few things. Because e- e- equality truly doesn't work because everyone is so different, it's be- especially broadcasters. For instance, a, there's, there was a wrestling promotion on, on Twitch that got banned recently that if that action was taking place on any other channel, that channel would be banned for violence. And also, with bigger streamers you do want to hold them maybe a bit more accountable than like smaller like irrelevant casters no offense to anybody who's like zero one viewer like there but you know the the the, the bottom layer at me next time sadomi <laughs> <laughs> shut up Udi poo <laughs> <laughs> but i think we'd be careful with trying to treat everyone equally versus with equity when it comes to broadcasters and their content you want to explain that a little bit further? Yeah, yeah sorry. I'm, I'm kind of um, going around here in a circle. But <laughs> essentially, essentially, if you guys don't know what ec- the difference between quality and equity is, if you give everyone the same uh, box to view, a, to, view, to view over a fence, people who are shorter may still not be able to see. People who are taller may not get any advantage from it. They'll just have that balance right there. Whereas equity, you give people who need the smaller boxes. There's people who are shorter. Give them bigger boxes so they can stand over them so they can see. So everyone can see. And when it comes to broadcasting, a good example I bring back, I don't really want to go to this one, but women in broadcasting and their attires, like Mixer does. Mixer does a very equal, equal, um, they focus on equality in that, in that regard. So therefore, let's say we're doing another wrestling stream, because I like wrestling and I think it's a good example. Usually men will wrestle topless, because, you know, you're, it's probably safer. Your fingers don't get stuck in all the clothing bits and everything. Women can't do that because then it's, it'll be, you know, nudity. And that's another um, kind of direction of where I think equality 
and equity and broadcasting because everyone i think twitch i view twitch as more than just people sitting down playing games because when i go on twitch i look for everything that is not that i look at cooking streams i look at wrestling streams i look at um special shows D D. I look at everything different because i think that's where streaming is going to go in the future and right now if you just do twitch as just people sitting down streaming games you're going to have to have this problem in the future when that is not what twitch is going to be focused on when twitch is more focused on everyone doing different things like for instance you can't show weapons on stream but you can show kitchen knives because kitchen knife can technically be described as a weapon like if i'm sitting down right here and pull out a knife that's a weapon if i'm cutting an onion it's no longer a weapon so we need right. to f- find a way i think twitch as a platform and as a community to understand equity versus equality when it comes to streaming that makes sense it's all about context yeah definitely all about context for sure um i, I and, thought it was in tos that men have to wear shirts because you aren't you can't show nipples on stream this is what i was so upset about last week when we were talking about the front page and literally the first thing that popped up on the front page mm-hmm. was a dude with no shirt on from three yeah. different angles walking right. on a treadmill and i was like wait a minute yeah what that rule so, seems to be really inconsistent. But there's and also like, the rule in there of like it depends on the context of it. Like mm-hmm. they yeah. say, like you can't wear like if you were sitting in your chair right now just wearing a sports bra, people would probably say that's not okay. But if you were in the back of your room doing squats, sit ups, working out, they would say, oh yeah, that's part of the attire. And I think that's where the weird line starts to kind of get. The in. line is context appropriate. And right. That's, yeah. That's like that's like to your point with knives in the kitchen versus a knife you pull out on stream. It's the context makes it different, and I think that that is kind of also where the the whole equality thing. It's just a blur. It's all a blur. How and I don't know how Twitch would make it unblurred. I don't think you can. I think it's always going to be gray and fuzzy. Yeah. But I don't. I I think that they're definitely not doing their best. I think that they need to change something. I just don't know what it is. Right. That's a, it's a very huge issue and it's not like there's a one single answer to fixing it or anything. Right. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, a, quite the task for sure. <laughs> um, so anybody else got anything on this topic? Nobody. All right, cool. So, uh, chat, don't forget if you guys have any questions for us, just at myself and true gaming and, uh, we'll, we'll pick up your question as soon as we can. So the next topic we have is how Business Insider thinks Twitch can avoid having a tough 2020. Uh, <laughs> I thought that like just like <laughs> clicking onto this, I I was like, this is the stupidest thing ever. Because what does Business Insider know? Yeah, and thanks. I was pretty much correct in my in my uh, <laughs> assessment that they're they don't know what they're talking about. So like the things that they focus on were like uh, offering exclusivity contracts for more streamers on Twitch. I think they mentioned something about. Uh, uh, about like the tournaments that just got handed over to YouTube. I'm pretty sure they, they mentioned that as well. Um, yeah. Things that like, yeah, it makes sense kind of, but at the end of the day, it's not going to really like, those aren't the things that make Twitch what it is. And those aren't the things that are going to make Twitch like continue to succeed really. Right. Like, like yeah, like Tim the Tatman signing an exclusivity contract is cool. But like if he were to go to Mixer, it's not like it's the end of Twitch as we've seen from, plenty of other large streamers right exactly twitch is still thriving it's not right and i think that competition is good but that doesn't always mean that it's that it's lucrative like it's good to have Mm -hmm. the competition and know that youtube and mixer are pursuing these big names that's Mm -hmm. great but ultimately you also have to look at the dedication of your community and you look at people like lupo and tim who are like built on twitch and their communities are so strong and the the things that they do like watching lupo's community raise two million dollars in 24 hours was the most beautiful thing i have ever seen and i don't see that happening anywhere else so you have to look at it from a lot of different standpoints and i think community in in community twitch has that in droves that youtube and mixer just does not have Mm -hmm. and the community is what funds a lot of twitch i mean that the revenue that comes from subs and the revenue that comes from people viewing the ads and the revenue that comes from everything else i mean it's community based and when you are the biggest community based platform i i don't know i I don't really see them as struggling right absolutely Mm -hmm. uh i kind of have my my own things that i want to just like talk about as to like points that 
Twitch could make to have a, a good 2020, but I wanted to know if any of you guys had a, any of your own like ideas or uh, advice, I guess, you know, as to what could really help Twitch out this year. Starting yeah. off with the uh, MPI. Uh, I mean, just like we talked about last week, just discoverability is such a huge thing. And the more that people start to create content and they start to stream and they see how hard it is to grow, but they see the discoverability on something like YouTube, that could lead people away. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that a lot of people are, are going to look that deep into it. But I think Twitch leaning more into that is going to be a big thing, making it so the quote unquote little guy, you know, has a chance that makes people feel welcome. They feel more like part of the community and want to be there. Um, I doubt this is going to happen, but it's something that I really like about Mixer. And I know it's because it's a much smaller platform that they're able to do this, but their social media team is amazing. The constant interactions that they have with people on Twitter, how often they're responding to people or starting conversations, different things like that is such a big deal and was like one of the main reasons that when I started making content and streaming that I was like, man, I should really try out Mixer. Like they seem to care about that community where how often do we see people, you know, tweet at Twitch and they literally never get a response from anyone. So I would like to see that somehow pick up, but you know, with that big of a platform, I don't know a good way to do it. Um, But that's what I think would be really cool to see is Twitch having fun with their community as much as Mixer does. It just makes it more exciting and more enticing to be on that kind of platform. Absolutely. Sodomi, what do you got on this one? (sighs) So (laughs) buckle up. (laughs) <laughs> Twitch has yep. this thing that I've never I'm a person that it's I can't really explain this really well but my emotions are not really normal to other people so I don't get this but after noticing other people and how they interact with Twitch I've kind of learned that when I when people say Twitch community focus I never really understood what that meant until I kind of paid attention to it watching some other streamers lately and from a business perspective keeping I think Twitch's biggest, like biggest driving factor of their success going forward will be the small to mid range streaming community. Because those are the people that don't just watch that one streamer, they watch a bunch of other streamers too. They keep the whole ecosystem alive. And you see a lot of um, people donate to smaller streamers. And you, everyone knows those whales, those whales and platform people who will donate hundreds of thousands and give subs out the wazoo and people who will be in every chat and just be well-known around the community in that way. And I feel like that's the majority, the majority of Twitch's active community right there. You don't see, I, don't, I think there's not as many who are in the larger, like, Tim and Tatman Lupo streams. I think those are mostly, like, lurkers to the platform. So you'll get people who, like, know of them and watch them, but won't, like, view them as often. But then the smaller streamers, the people who are in those smaller to mid-range communities, those are the lifeblood of what keeps Twitch alive. And people probably the people who call Twitch out the most and have the most power, I think. Mm. Just because it's it's a strength in numbers game. Mm-hmm. And I think Twitch is to keep them having a good 2020s, they need to keep those small to mid-range um streamers and community members on the platform the most. And a lot of them have sworn loyalty to Twitch, um, whether they realize it or not. But objectively, I think it's a very dangerous spot that twitch needs to i think they are paying attention like they can they can get more people to stream and watch more streams themselves twitch will keep their spot in the market as like the the cool place to go and play video games when broadcast to your friends whereas youtube and mixer will become well i'm, I'm making a video on mixer later because it's gonna be fun but youtube will be the we see all the premiere all the like big things happening because with Twitch, I, I've never gotten this to where I've seen people connect so well over a group of things, except through video games themselves, such as like leagues and clubs and um, guilds and raids. Mm-hmm. So doing that through Twitch is just another extension of that. And so as long as that method and medium is easy for people to start and jump onto, I think that's where Twitch will keep its market share at. And also good time to me. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Jambo. Yeah. Um, 
honestly, I, I don't, I don't know. And I know that that sounds kind of weird because I, I'm on the platform and I always think that there's room for growth, but I think it's going to be interesting going into 2020. With everything that happened in 2019, there's so many different avenues for for Twitch to go. And while I agree that um, discoverability on websites such as Mixer and YouTube is great, I I think I think with Twitch that is a lot harder to do. And it would be great to see them maybe try and make that easier, but. When you have so many different people making so many different kinds of content, it's very hard to judge what people want to see. Because even now, like, you go on your Discover page, right? And you can scroll down and you can see, like, three different sections. Like, I I, I always watch, like, Violet. And she plays um, Dead by Daylight. But I watch Violet because it, she's my best friend. So I don't like Dead by Daylight, but that's what comes up because I've been watching her streams. It would be cool if you could select what you want to see on your discoverability page. If you want to see just chatting, if you want to see Overwatch, if you want to see cooking streams, you can select that in your settings to be able to decide what you want to discover. And I think it would be great instead of automatically reading it, give your give streamers a survey to figure out what they want to see. And, and I just think that would be a lot better than making an educated guess because in a situation like mine where you're supporting your friend and you mod for them, but that game isn't what you want to see, then you're, you're only going to get those suggestions because Twitch thinks that that's what you like to see, but it's not. So. Get right. So with one thing with that too, that's a great idea, but the problem with Twitch is they don't. So all of right now, I ask you a question. If you, if you didn't have any chat in whatsoever, okay. But everyone still watched you the same as they did. What information could you grab about your viewers that you can use to recommend them other streams or recommend them anything whatsoever? Me, I'm I'm sorry. What would I ask my? Okay, sorry. My so, chat or, so let's I'm say sorry. your chat doesn't exist, but they're still okay. there watching. Okay, there's no chat. Chat is just banned. Chat is just done. No chat. Chat's banned. Okay. <laughs> what information could you get from your viewers that Twitch provides you that will help you recommend them things such as other streams? or products and services or videos or content or anything like that. Well, right. But that's, that's kind of what I mean is if, is if you could go into your settings and you could select from drop down menus, what you want to see, because they have different categories. They have different games. It would be very easy to make a drop down menu that would allow you to select what you want to see on your discovered page, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, like when you view a stream and there's an ad, they can't really, take anything from that because you're not choosing what ad shows up on the channel that you're watching so it's kind of like i get what they're trying to do with with guessing what you like based on what you're watching but that works a lot easier for sites like mixer and youtube that are more gaming based in their live streaming with twitch there's so much else that you can watch and it's it's the biggest variety platform as far as live streaming goes and i think it would be I think it would be really beneficial to not only the viewers, but to Twitch allowing you to personalize the content you want to discover, because I think that makes a lot more sense than, um, than them just trying to read what you watch most because of the fact that they have moderators and people who support channels because they support the people. And I think that ultimately we all find channels that we go to originally for either the game they're playing or a clickbait title and you end up staying for the streamer themselves. And I think that that's, that's kind of the direction that Twitch needs to start focusing on is finding what you like at the surface. And then that's how you discover who you want to be around. I, I just think it's not as, it's not as easy as the game somebody is playing. You, you want to discover people. I think right. that kind yeah. of comes to you back to where the tag system needs to yeah. be yep. relevant because that's that could be a huge way to find people because there are some of those tags that there it's not just like uh, competitive first person shooter or 100% playthrough it is very personal there you know there's right. the for me there's the mental health tag that i use every single stream there's um lgbtq plus tag where you can specifically find streamers who are part of the lgbtq community 
And that's what I think would be more beneficial as far as like searching and using that tag system, because that's where you find people who are like minded and have similar interest or a personality similar to yours so that you can actually connect to them versus clicking on the dead by daylight category and just hoping you stumble into someone who you happen to agree with things on. But how many times do I go in one of those click on something and the, like the first thing that that person says, I'm like, I do not agree with anything on this stream or what you're saying. I am going to leave now. And then I just have to keep doing that until I find someone or I give up and go watch something else or I fall back into this is the same streamer I've watched 4 million times in a row. That's great and all keep supporting the people that you support. But if you're looking for something new, it's very frustrating to find something new on Twitch, I think. Yeah, I agree. The tags do need to get fixed. I I have I've had like maybe three people that I remember coming in because of a tag. But two of them came in because I always had the stand up comedy tag on. And they tell me to tell them a joke. Yeah. Because it's there. I think the only pe- I've had a few people come in because of the closed captioning. Because yeah. someone who needs closed captionings is going to go to a stream that already has it and click it so that it takes you to the tag. But the fact that I have to go to a stream that already has the tag on it to click on the tag to find people in the tag makes no sense. <laughs> like, right. Why does the tag exist right. at that point? Because Weak. what if I've never found... What if today's my first day on Twitch... And I go and I'm trying to find closed captionings. How am I supposed to find it? Yeah, totally agree. I think like we were saying, like the, the tags need a huge overhaul. And we talked about this a lot last week. It needs to be something a little bit more personalized. Like you guys were saying, it has to be more content based than it is just the game category or whatever category you're streaming under. You know what I mean? It has to be more, it has to be, it has to be more based on like the kind of content that you offer like that has nothing related to the video game you're playing at all or whatever it is that you are streaming. It should be more focused on who you are as a streamer, you know, the things that you like to do on that stream. And those are what's most important. Not the, not necessarily the game you're playing or the amount of viewers you have, but the kind of content that you're trying to provide for people. And I think if Twitch is able to figure out a way to do this, it'll drastically increase the amount of users on Twitch, especially active users, it'll keep people on longer because they'll be able to find more streamers that they get along with at a much faster and easier rate. And I think that would just do amazing things for Twitch and the whole community in general. Um, so, Domi, it looks like you were researching something there. Um, so, I was I was looking to see if you could actually search by tags, and I just learned you actually can't, which also shows that I haven't used tags either. Besides when I just thought of it today. <laughs> right. So that's a little secret to myself. What yeah. would, I mean, I said this before, I think we all agreed last time, but if we just got rid of the categories and replaced them with tags and put game cat games into the tags. I mean, I still be- think that the game category still matters to a point, but it do, it's not as heavy of a, it, it doesn't mean as much as it does to like, are you trying to find a, a stream that's funny or a more serious stream? You know what I mean? Are you trying to find like, you're trying to figure out how to play this new game, or are you trying to watch somebody play this game and have a fun time? Like those yeah, are the things that matter are... a lot more than the specific game. Yeah, yeah. And I you also like... add those at the tags as well too. So you add yeah. those with the tags this way because, like I said, if you look at any other searching platform, it searches for keywords. I use Google and YouTube a lot because I use Google and YouTube a lot, and also they do it pretty well. If I want to find a video on plants, I type in plants. I get a plant video. If I type in I'm looking for, um, let's say, a plant stream on Twitch. Those exist somewhere. I type in plant, and I'll get somebody who's like grenade plant or something random playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So, Mm -hmm. I don't know. You can't... There's nothing to... Like I said, there's no searchability on this platform. You can't look for anything. It just shows up, and you have to hope it's there or not, or you have to find it somewhere else. And I think I've seen it on, like, YouTube and... Facebook gaming and things where the category for the game is kind of like an afterthought. Like it is there. If you go to YouTube and you watch like a destiny video and it's tag destiny, you can click that and it'll take you to other destiny streams and videos. But I didn't find that video from that. Probably I found it by searching it where Twitch it's like, that's the only way to find people. And that's a fine way to find people. If that's what you want. Like if you 
are specifically seeking out somebody playing like like me, for example. I'm playing Skyrim for the first time. People are specifically looking for something like that or somebody playing Dark Souls for the first time because that's a big game that people like to see people play for the first time. That's the easiest way to find it. But if you're on the platform, you're like, I literally could not care what game I watched today. I just want to find somebody um, that also likes, uh, is, is also part of the LGBTQ community. How am I supposed to find that? I have to find a streamer who already has it. Mm-hmm. And again, what's the point? Right. It seems like they're kind of giving up on tags altogether if you can't actually search by them. Which, it's, yeah, it's like it came well out and they for, were immediately just kind of like, eh. yeah, it doesn't bode well for the future of discoverability on Twitch. If they implement tags, which is supposed to help increase discoverability, but then totally disregard them from making making you able to search those tags you know what i mean like it's not like they're like oh we're gonna release these and then we'll continue to work on them and add more to make it easier for you to identify yourself and describe yourself as a streamer they just totally make it really really difficult to search obviously if you can't actually search through the tags Um, yeah and i think too like the tag system is is always been weird to me that i can't put whatever i want that is limited to certain tags where like youtube you can put any tag you want so right. like there's been plenty of times where I'll be scrolling through here and it doesn't have a tag that fits what I'm doing. And but there's, you know, such specific weird little things in here <laughs> that it has but it doesn't have other certain weird little things. I'm like, yeah. but but that where's my thing? Like whenever <laughs> I've done video editing streams, there is not video editing in here. There's editing, but that can mean anything. Right. But there's you know visual art there's line art there's voice acting um texas hold'em well sure like (laughs) (laughs) hello (laughs) twitch is a texas hold'em platform yeah that's yeah that's true twitch is going to take over espn's world poker tour oh they also have (laughs) omaha hold'em in case you guys wanted to use that never heard of that that all the time i'm strictly an (laughs) omaha hold'em platform (laughs) i'm about to be now (laughs) i'm changing everything for you might as well do it right yeah somebody's gotta be searching that thing up (laughs) wait a Um, minute omaha hold'em yeah i don't know what that is now i'm kind of curious i'm there's one in here for a specific convention gen con yep uh, not TwitchCon, mind you. Omaha. Oh, oh, there is at the bottom if I scroll down. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, that's probably not good. They should do that. Did you figure out what it was, Jambo? I'm a. Uh, I am hold'em. about to be down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, Lord. Are, uh, how are there no Omaha Hold'em channels live right now? Not even one. It's 11.03 a.m. on a Monday. <laughs> Come on. That sounds like a Omaha bad tag. Time. Yeah, right? <laughs> it sounds like nobody's chasing their Omaha Hold'em dreams. Jeez. We well, so just found out how to grow on Twitch. On Twitch. What is this? We just found out how to grow on Twitch, chat. Okay, if you guys want to grow on Twitch, you play poker. 100 viewers playing Texas Hold'em. Good for yeah. him. How many people do you think are converting to Texas Hold'em streamers now? Like, I played that game once or twice. <laughs> yeah, Jay was like, I'm riding this. Let's there's, go. There's 62 people watching a jar of peanut butter. Oh, don't even. No, I follow that what? guy. I'm going to start a stream that's a jar of jelly jar and see if I can butter. network with that Jack guy. Dyer, and he just streams a jar of peanut butter. So that's it. Partnered. Yep. But there's also a pet rock that got partnered. So We were talking about discoverability. If a rock can do it, so can I. All right, I just posted the <laughs> jar of peanut butter in the chat for anybody who doesn't believe us. It's literally just a jar of peanut yeah, butter. That's, that's it. Yeah, it's, oh, well, one it's time, under art. This is art. Okay, so you can it. He shoved a, a John Cena action figure into the jar of peanut butter. So did he get a new jar of peanut butter? <laughs> oh, yeah, there have, been, there have been four jars of peanut butter. Read his panels. He tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, you're asking you know, all these questions was, that hey. have already been answered. Okay. <laughs> Get with the times, man. <laughs> yeah, that is compelling stuff. Very, it very tells rich. tells you that it's a live video so that you don't doubt for one minute that it's just a picture <laughs> of an open jar of peanut butter. <laughs> he really opened that peanut butter and put it in front of a camera and pressed go live. 
I doubt. I still think it's a picture. It doesn't seem real. I really hope he didn't even put it there live on camera. Like, I hope it was just there and he hit go lock. Like, he didn't even, like, slide it into frame or nothing. Oh, could you imagine? What would a starting soon screen even be for that? Opening the jar. (laughs) It would just be a peanut. New jar, okay? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. Uh, We went off a little bit uh, on the topic there, but. uh, It's important. Peanut butter is important. Okay, and so is art. So we have it to talk about Omaha it legally. Oldham. What is that? You still don't know? I'm Googling it now. What were you doing before? <laughs> Omaha Hold'em is a community card poker game similar to Texas Hold'em. Each player is dealt four cards. What's is that the difference? <laughs> Why is this French? What is happening? I don't like Omaha Hold'em. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> it sounds not good. It sounds not good. Okay, we do have a question from K Girl Plays. <laughs> She says, what, she says, what do you think of Twitch bringing in partners as ambassadors? Do you feel that it's just another tier for streamers to aim for, like partner or affiliate? Or is there something more to the title? Uh, Jambo, you said that you had wanted to yeah. talk about this. So. I have thoughts on this. So yeah, I think the ambassador program is a great thing because it's not just partners. It's affiliates, too. It's anybody that represents the platform well that that like hold, holds it up for them. Like I think it's great. Some of the people that I've seen become ambassadors are like top of their game like like gabby sparts is like top magic the gathering streamer one of them she's an ambassador for twitch you've got little sia who is top just dance she's an ambassador for the community and it's awesome to see these people representing the platform there are also affiliates who are um, ambassadors as well and i think that that's great here is my big problem with ambassadors is i feel like the, they do not hold them accountable, and that is probably one. Of... <laughs> she, she's very a dog, by the way. Yeah, um, <laughs> they don't hold them accountable like they should. There was an okay. issue with an ambassador. I'm not naming names. There was an issue with an ambassador. Um, it... <laughs> Beasley's very, very it into is. this topic. She. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're muted, MPI. So, there was an issue. I'm talking. There was an issue <laughs> um, with an ambassador who um, there's a there's a streamer that uh, a lot of us are friends with. Uh, she hit a huge sub milestone, unlocked all 60 emote slots, and um, it was a really big deal. Her community came together. It was like a whole big stream. It was awesome, and an ambassador clipped it and blocked her posted it on Twitter and called her out for having that many subs. And like, she made a joke about how she was going to ban someone if they gifted more subs. And she was like, Oh, what a problem to have when your community gives you subs and you're going to ban them. Like as though it was, it wasn't a joke as though she was actually going to. So she posted that and then started coming at other people in the community who have achieved success. She called me out. Um, She called out two other people because they had success and high sub numbers that she didn't have. And she attacked them for it on Twitter. And she's still a Twitch ambassador. And yeah, that's, they sound that's lonely. That's yeah. It. Yep. it sounds sad. Like if you're, if you're that worried about somebody else's success to make it like, so it pushes you in a negative way. Like you just really need to take a step back and reevaluate yourself. But that's crazy that Twitch is allowing that to happen and allowing this right. person to see as a Twitch ambassador, because that's not, like as somebody like how is that thinks, supporting the platform? Right, exactly. It doesn't do any good at all. You're just spreading more negativity, which I know plenty of people on Twitch that are more deserving than somebody like that to be an ambassador. Um, and as somebody who streams on Twitch, obviously, like seeing that doesn't make me like doesn't make me happy that that person's a Twitch ambassador, and it makes me even less happy that Twitch isn't doing anything about it because this is a platform that obviously all of us do really care about and enjoy. Um, right. So seeing somebody like that get kind of praised in a way by Twitch, but not held accountable when they're doing something that's wrong. I'm not saying you should cancel them like we were just talking about earlier, but this should be a thing where Twitch holds them accountable and says, like, you really need to put out a statement about this and you like you need to fix this. Because that's right. not something that can just be left alone just to be forgotten about because that person is supposed to be representing Twitch. And, and should be held to a much higher standard than any of us. I'm not to say that we should be able to do the same thing and get away with it. Right. But I, I totally agree. That's, that's ridiculous. Yep. 
Agreed. <clears throat> Anybody else on this one? Yeah, so I've always said that partnership isn't a achievement, it's a contract. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to representing a brand, yeah, Twitch is very... I. If you look at the number of partners and the supposed number of partner managers, there is no way they keep track of everybody. No way. And I'm I'm pretty sure if anyone who is like newly freshly partnered, they could probably tell me what I'm tell me this that that there's like no communication there. At least back before, like a year ago, when I was talking to an old uh, Twitch partner who now makes a partner, he was like, "There's no communication. It is horrible." But but I do think Twitch has a chance to redeem themselves in 2020 if they focus on getting that taken care of. Because I, I think that Twitch knows their brand image can be soiled by some random chooch on the internet. Because <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that word. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a lot like another word I'm not allowed to say. Oh no, no, no. It's not that word. It's not that word, but it's uh I'm out. I'm out. It's a podcast. But yeah, no, literally, if you're if you're Twitch partnered, you technically represent the brand for Twitch. And we've seen a lot of Twitch partners who do some dumb stuff. And we're not even talking about the like the small people, even the, the bigger names too. Jesus. So it's I feel like Twitch kind of wants to also separate themselves from their ambassadors and their like partners as a brand, as like a service, but kind of just, I don't know. They need to be careful because I don't know if they want people to represent them or they don't because of how they address people acting like just idiots. I'm, I'm surprised they don't want people to represent their brand better or if they don't see that as them representing their brand. Or if I was doing brand like management or, or PR for Twitch, does not do it, does not do their job. I agree. I know that back in the day, back in the day, um, Twitch used to have partnership managers that worked directly with Twitch partners. And so when you got partnered, you had a contact that was given to you that you could reach out to specifically if you wanted your name changed or if you needed help with something with emotes or you anything you needed you had somebody designated to you they don't have that anymore and i think that's that's kind of a shame and at the same time i understand because unless like there are what like is it four is it like fifty thousand partners out yeah, of I, out of three million lot. or something like that it, it really it's it's a lot but at the same time it isn't because if you look at how many people you have on the platform if only 50,000 of them are partners yeah. that's still a lot of people though for for you to designate people to and then that's also assuming though that these people need you all the time which they don't i, I think it that's would true. be nice to have mm -hmm. people designated to partners specifically and having that specific contact so you know you are always going to have somebody to contact if if you do need someone honestly twitch just needs that in general contacting twitch is like going through a labyrinth so i really yeah. just think mm -hmm. that they need to have direct contact emails in general that would be a great way to yeah. better twitch as a whole i Absolutely. think they had like 500 or 600 partner managers like total which yeah. if you do the math that's not a lot <laughs> that's a lot of partners per person and then Hold if you ever seen a school teacher okay yeah <laughs> if you've seen like, school like teachers with 50 students in a class and they have five classes you know how that goes <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. 600 yeah let me that's 83.3 people so they're cutting somebody into thirds to be able to make that work <laughs> that's a problem twitch yeah you gotta start together you gotta stop cutting people into people thirds on stream but you're cutting your workers in half <laughs> 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 yeah, to put it into perspective on like the like the percentage of how many streamers are partners, like only ten percent or what no, only five percent of streamers on Twitch have ten or more viewers, which is like we talked about this last week. And just think that like how much smaller the percentage of streamers are that are partnered, it like that's it it's gotta be like much, much less than one percent. Like a whole like a lot less, obviously. Um so it is interesting to think about that. I did know that they used to have the the partner managers. I know that used to be a thing, and I know that it, it's obviously not the case anymore. Uh, clearly, they need to hire some more people 
whole people, not just thirds of people, obviously, because a third of a person doesn't really do anything. Um, but yeah, so, pay him less. Yeah, yeah, you probably could. Yeah, <laughs> a third of a person. <laughs> you just I have do, his legs. How do I do percents? Huh? Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Hello? What is fifty thousand percent of three? <laughs> What, what is, is fifty thousand percent? Hello, welcome to third grade math. How are we doing today? <laughs> what? what is fit three point five million fifty thousand? How much is fifty thousand oh, percent I'll, I'll, of thirty five? Wait, <laughs> I know, I know what you're asking. I know what you're asking. I got you. Give me a second. Yeah, we've been, are you we've asking been, the percentage of people that are partners of all crush. the people on Twitch? <laughs> that was incredible. Uh, play with Jambo on please Twitch, by the way. <laughs> play with Jambo. Yeah, please clip. Uh, that needs to be everywhere. Thank you. Now we know why the name isn't Math with Jambo. That's definitely <laughs> <not. laughs> oh. Oh, my shining moment. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, Laura, one of my, one of my good friends is a math teacher, and I, I do that stuff to her so, all the time. Like, how math? And she's like, oh my God, I'm a math teacher, and I'm so upset with you. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it, it is. Parents with us. One percent, just barely one oh. percent. There you go. One percent of streamers are partnered out of the three point five million on Twitch. Even one percent. Okay. And I did that math in my head. Good for so, you. I watched Thank it. You. Saw it happen. You didn't ask the yeah. question, but you could find the answer by yourself. That's interesting. All right. Yeah, it was. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> next topic. I actually wanted to talk to Jambo about something because if you guys follow Jambo on Twitter. Uh, like you see it all the time and if you don't follow her on Twitter you need to fix this because the tweets are amazing uh, so we always get questions about social media usage and how you should use it to you know to get your name out there and you know just whatever there's you know how many questions there are about you know using Twitter and everything and so from someone who uses Twitter so effectively what are kind of the tips that you have on it you know what I mean okay so I for anybody that uh that doesn't know. Um, I went to college for marketing and business management. Um, and so there was a lot of that. That was like right when social media was really popping off. Like, um, so God, I feel so old. That was right <laughs> when it was starting to become more prominent. And um, so I learned a lot about social media and I've taught myself a lot over the years. And I can tell you one thing, consistency is key. Consistency in when you post, consistency in how you post, consistency in who you are. Because there are a lot of people who think they have to be different on social media, but I'm telling you right now, transparency and just transparency. <laughs> <laughs> transparency in who you are is going to get you way further than being someone you're not. Mm -hmm. And I think with streaming, a lot of people put a lot of focus on posting about their stream. But I'm telling you right now, the if you can post less about your stream and more about who you are and the things that you do and how your day is going and what you did over the weekend and the fact that you have family and pets and friends and you make yourself a person that people can relate to rather than just a content creator, you're going to go a lot further and you're going to grow a lot more organically than finding people who just follow you because you stream and want you to follow them back. You're going to make connections as people and as friends. And that's, that's something that I am so thankful for. And I think if, if I hadn't done my journey that way, I wouldn't be where I am. But yeah, post, I think that a lot of people just have this laser focus on I'm a streamer and I'm going to, I'm not going to grow if I don't talk about it. And if I don't post about it and, and it's, it's so much more than that. Just, just be you don't, don't just be who you are on Twitch. I mean, you're a person and people want to connect with the streamer. That's what's so great about streaming is you're a person and people mm. like people and people want to get to know people. And I, I think that more focus should be on who you are, not just what you do. Yeah, I, I think that's that's great. And obviously, like your Twitter has been doing really, really well. Uh, I don't know how long you've been focusing on doing this, like kind of like social media. I don't know if you've been doing it the whole time. But I know about within a year like and the, a half, I think. Yeah, I was going to say within like the last year for sure. I've definitely noticed a huge increase in the success of just your Twitter post, obviously. You know, what I mean, like and success, yeah. obviously, going off of retweets, comments, likes, all that stuff. Um, and how much of that do you think is actually translated over to your Twitch channel? Oh, my God. 
I, it's insane. It's okay. insane. Like every every stream, there are people who come in and say, hey, I found you on Twitter. I watched this video of you roasting this troll. How's your mom's new job at the zoo? Streamers don't have legs. Like they come in and reference the videos that I post or the one where I got scorpioned by my headphone cable. Like it, <laughs> yeah. it, they come in and they just <laughs> reference those things because they see them on Twitter or somebody shared it with them or their, their mom commented on it or like something like, it's it's nuts how much it translates. I posted one video um, a few months ago, I think in November, and overnight I got about 500 Twitch followers, over a thousand Twitter followers. Like it's crazy. People want to see relatable, funny content, and that's evidently all I can provide. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. Just if you want to relate, Jambo, there you go. But then um, that's the thing. Like people come in and they only know me as that girl who got yeeted by her headphone cable. They're like, isn't do it that again. better than not knowing you at all yeah do it again yeah, absolutely no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah i mean with things like this like the answer can always be so simple but like somebody on the outside that doesn't really i don't like it just it might not click like even for myself like i've always yeah. been wondering like what i should be doing on twitter and like the, like it's always a simple answer it's always like oh yeah like why didn't i think about it like that but, but it's daunting I mean, and it absolutely. can be overwhelming because yeah. the and I think another thing is, is social media is honestly, I, I don't know how many people will agree with this, but I think it to be the case. Um, social media is almost more important than your stream itself, because if people can't find you outside of your stream, if you are only letting people find you and see you while you're live, that's such a small percentage of the time mm -hmm. when social media is 25, eight people are on Twitter, on Instagram, Zanga wherever club penguin like they're all over social media and and they need to be able to find you and interact with you and so platforms like discord and twitter are are so important because it keeps the community and you alive for them all the time and the more platforms that your content can spread through and the more friendships that you make the better off you're going to be honestly twitter is the most vital platform for streamers and i think making more content there and posting your content there building that bridge from twitter to twitch is the most substantial thing you can do as a streamer well there you go that was a very very good answer to all that uh so Domi, i know you've been focusing a lot about content on other platforms um do you have any questions or do you have anything to go off of on top of what jamba was just talking about so I was so the entire time Jane was talking, I went through her Twitter and I scrolled through and she definitely preaches what she just said, especially with consistency. I don't think she's made less than three posts a day on Twitter since um, at least the new year and probably long before that. And like I said, I, if I'd spend the entire time scrolling, there's enough content for me to look through. I was looking through and I've seen her on on Twitter plenty of times. Like the minute I saw her join the show, I was like, oh, that's Jambo. I know who that is. Wait, how do I know who this is? Oh, yeah. Boom. So right. the more times you see something, the more times you'll you'll see them. Simple Name as that. <laughs> the more times you see them, exactly. the more times you'll see them. <laughs> True <laughs> words have never been said, man. Man, that's mean. gotta be a quote. We should put that on a on a stream. Put that on a t shirt, shirt. please. Yep. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. The, the more times you shoot, the more times you shoot the ball, okay? <laughs> Bro, that was solid advice. Thank you so Worth. much. <laughs> Well, I know you just changed so many lives in chat that just can't believe the <laughs> advice. Oh the, the, the... <laughs> okay, so listen. You miss 100% of the Domi. shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> the more you see them, the more you see them. Wow. Dang, Ooh. dude, that is deep. That is deep stuff. <laughs> is. Oh, my God. Am I following you on Twitter? I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I say oh I say dumb God. stuff all the time, all the time. <laughs> all right, FBI, what do you got on this one, my guy? <laughs> please give us like I don't know how you're gonna top what Sodomi just said, but just uh, do your best. <laughs> and I mean, we're done. It's it's really though like that's something that I've been like I don't want to use the word like struggling with, but like dealing with lately of like. I got so ingrained in the thought process of stream all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. 
<laughs> you gotta take a shower. Put up the be right back screen, dummy. You gotta go to sleep. Put up a nap screen. Uh, but how often do we hear people say that? Like they were like, "Why'd you start streaming? Oh, I was playing video games. I might as well just stream it anyway." And they're like, "That's all they do is they just stream it because they're playing Call of Duty for eight hours a night with their buddies." And that's something that I'm finally like trying, like tricking my brain. Like, how do I get out of that thought process? Because like I know that is not the way to do it. Right. But my brain is like, but bro, what if it is like, hear me out. <laughs> it might be. And like, how are you going to schedule time to do all this other stuff? And I'm like, brain. Do you guys remember when wow classic came out and uh, Asmund gold was in queue and he got kicked out of the game and ended up in queue. And he was like, 20,000th in line or something crazy. <laughs> and so he was like, I haven't slept in like however many hours. Yep. He's like, I'm just gonna, and he gets so angry that he just <laughs> grabbed the mattress that he keeps behind him on stream, throws it on the ground. He's like, I'm gonna take a nap. You fucks call me when the queue is up and I'll wake up. So he unlisted himself and he literally just went to sleep. <laughs> and he put this message on his on his stream in like all this big white text across the top. And he just said that he was being shut out by Blizzard and that it was a conspiracy. <laughs> and he went to sleep. Content. <laughs> MPI, that's how you grow. That, yeah, see? Beautiful. All that stuff you told me about Twitter was a lie. I knew it. I knew yep. that that was the true answer. Yep. But um, but no, I mean, that it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on YouTube, on anywhere, people want to connect to somebody that is relatable. Yep. Like, I've never thought to myself, like, man, I really hope Kevin Hart starts streaming because I can't relate to anything about that dude's life. He is a multimillionaire that does whatever he wants. I want to talk to somebody who's like, yo, dog, I uh, I pet a cat last night. That was pretty fun. Come watch my shirt. <laughs> like, I have a cat. I pet my cat, too. Let's hang out. <laughs> that's a very Dude, simplified that's answer on Twitter. for it. But, uh, <laughs> but really, that's like, it goes back to earlier we were talking about do you watch a stream for the game or do you watch it for the streamer? Right. You're most people, myself included are watching it because I want to connect with somebody who thinks the same way that I do or who feels like the same way that I do or thinks about things the way that I do, or even just like, I like the same music as you mm -hmm. like, but maybe we don't play the same games, but you know, this new album just dropped, man, I'm going to come by and talk about it with. You. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm, I'm just trying to like, kick myself more to like do it if that makes yeah. sense and yeah. find the right way to do it because all the time I'm like man i should probably post a clip of my stream I'm like i literally did nothing today on stream and everything was stupid <laughs> i hate everything it's hate like that episode of I hate my stream. it's like the Pop parks and rec <laughs> episode where chris <laughs> pratt is just like it's like life is meaningless everything's pointless i'm dying you're dying stream title and I'll <laughs> life is meaningless i hate myself <laughs> Well, this is going to be a super positive stream today. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get what you're saying about that, though, about having to force yourself to to do this kind of stuff. Because, like, for the last year, I was streaming full time, and I thought of myself as just a full time streamer. And you really need to start seeing yourself as a full time content creator instead, and yeah. that's you know content across mm -hmm. all platforms. And so, I've been trying to focus on being a full time content creator starting January of this year, uh, beginning of January. It's still January, um, <clears throat> but. It's it's like Jambo was saying, it's super daunting, you know, trying to trying to think of what you want to be on social media and like what like that that first post towards trying to put yourself out there more. Like what do you want that first one to be? When in reality you just need to just make tweets that are right. relatable, like she was just saying, you just need to be yourself. But it, it is like a very it's just like hitting go live the first time. It's it's panic inducing almost for somebody yeah. who, who really does care it's so mm -hmm. scary and i think mm -hmm. this is something a lot of people don't talk about it is very scary to be yourself on social media because if a post doesn't do well and it's you being yourself it feels mm -hmm. like part of you is being rejected 100 mm -hmm. and that is a very terrifying thing the thing that you have to remember is that regardless, it's you and you are always going to be you and you don't want people surrounding you that don't give a about you. So right. if if you post something and it doesn't receive well, it doesn't matter. Then that one didn't move on. And that's it, it's it's very hard because we 
as human beings hate rejection and we fear the rejection from just being ourselves. And I, I understand that fully when you invest all of your time, cause it's not like being an actor, right? Like it's not, it's not like you're Brad Pitt in a movie. And if people don't like who you played in that movie, it doesn't mean they don't like Brad Pitt. It means they don't like the character in content creation. It's you all the time. You right. are you. Mm -hmm. And if people don't like you, that means they don't like you. And that's a very hard thing for people to grow past, but you can't take it personally. There's, you're in a sea of 3.5 million other people doing the same thing. And they don't like a lot of those people either. They don't even know some of those people exist. It just, it just is what it is. And that's a really hard mindset to get behind. And I, I, I just want to remind anybody watching this or anybody that ends up seeing this, that, that people love you and, and, and you should love you. And what you're doing is very brave. Anybody who's putting themselves out there on Twitch, on social media, anybody being that bold and taking that jump and putting their life on the internet is brave because it is a scary place on Twitch and on Twitter and really anywhere, especially 4chan. Don't go there. But it's, <laughs> it, it is hard to sit there and try and think of a tweet. So my biggest suggestion, my biggest suggestion is make use of your Twitter drafts. If you think of something funny, if you think of a post that you want to post later, save it in your drafts and post it later. I have 50 something drafts right now in my, in my Twitter drafts that I can just whip out at any time if I need to post something because it is about consistency. I post minimum three times a day. Mm -hmm. And like, like Tsunami said, like I'm, I'm constantly posting because you want to constantly stay fresh, but there's also a balance of not posting too much and drowning out your other posts. It's a science and it's different for everyone, but consistency is really just the biggest thing that I can tell you. I think what you said, just said that it's a science is so important and people don't yeah. realize that. Like, I mean, you you even said it. You went to to school for this stuff. Like mm -hmm. you you studied these things and got a got a degree in this. I'm guessing. Um, and like so many people see, especially I think either like the older generation or people who are just like I got on Facebook to keep up with my friends. Uh, and they see like job openings for like a social media manager, and they're like, bro. I got on Facebook last night. I'm hired. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's the, it's no different than marketing and advertising has always been. There are yeah. numbers you have to look at. There are things you have to think about. It's not just the Wendy's Twitter account who happens to roast everybody and did it really well. And then what, like McDonald's tried to do it and everybody's like, shut up McDonald's. Nobody likes you. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> shut up, McDonald's. Companies like Wendy's and Arby's and DiGiorno and like all of these different companies who actually interact with people on their social media management is like through the roof. And I think another thing a lot of people don't realize is streaming and social media and content creation is a seven day a week job. It mm -hmm. is seven days a week, nonstop. You are either streaming or you're in other streams or you're on Twitter or you're on Instagram or you're on whatever else that you're doing. You're editing videos. For me, I start stream at 10 o'clock every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And I go until about four and I don't leave my office till nine. So I'm either editing or I'm visiting other streams or whatever. And that's four days a week of 11 hour days. And that's not even including what I do on Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays. It's, it's a lot of work. And I, I think that the, the sooner people realize how much work you really need to put into it, if you want to take it seriously, the better off they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. A lot of people, yeah. Changing everything I've ever done ever in one <laughs> yeah. night. A lot I of people still think it's, oh yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> think that more people, and this is, I kind of learned this about myself too, where I've learned that I like more of the back end of consecration versus the consecration itself. And also the amount of work needed to do because technically jambo you're doing the work of at least minimum four different jobs minimal minimal mm -hmm. you're you're a producer you are host you are social media manager and you're also um an editor agent agent it, and agent i'm agent, five editor. people bitches yeah you're five people bitches so <laughs> <laughs> I can't Wait. do math though. I'm still hiring an accountant. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so a lot of people try to do it's a lot of work. And it's understandable if people don't want to do all that work. It's a lot. Like me, I've learned I don't want to do all that work. Not because I'm lazy. I am, but it's just it's it's a lot for anybody, especially if you're trying to fit it on with like social life, relationship, 
work if you're working like a normal like regular 40 hour full time a week job so it's a lot Mm -hmm. so i think people understanding and being okay and coming to terms with being a hobbyist when it comes to being a broadcaster is great and for me personally i love the fact that i've folks started to focus more on just the back end of it instead of being the actual like one man band show because it's so much less stressful and i feel like i get a lot more done get more a lot more accomplished and i'll get that feeling of dread i'm sure you probably get the feeling of god i didn't get enough done today even though you put in 13 hours 14 hours and that one day i I, every day and i know that one day you worked like 24 hours straight because i know you did it i'm not sure when but you did it in the last like month or two yeah, and I did a 24 like, hour stream at the end of November. Boom, exactly. And you're still like, I didn't get enough done. Nope. And that's a very dangerous mindset. And I kind of mm-hmm. want to make sure that, like I said, for me, I keep that staying up here because this is everything. This is everything for me. So, absolutely. If you have any tips for anybody, especially myself, of how to balance, of how you balance everything? Honestly, I do. If you guys really want to know, I can. Yes, absolutely. Me, yeah, do it. So up. I've been doing this for three years, almost three years in April that I've been streaming like, like full on. And I had a, I had a full time job for most of that. It, I lost my job at um, the beginning of September this past year. And I, I it was what I thought was going to be the most stressful time of my life. And it ended up allowing me to do this full time and supporting myself. Um, so The one thing that I can't stress enough is take breaks. You have to take breaks. You need to take breaks while you're working. You need to take breaks while you're streaming because a lot of people think if they take a break doing anything ever that it's time that they're missing out, not working, but really you're just running yourself into the ground and then you're not going to do your best quality work. It's going to be garbage and you're, and you're not going to feel satisfied and you're going to feel exhausted because you're not taking time away from your office and you're not taking time away from your content and you have to You absolutely have to. People work five days a week and have two days off. As content creators, it's very easy, very easy, coming from a workaholic, to get caught up in your work and not stop working. There have been days like weekends where I have woken up on Saturday and worked in my office, gone to bed, woke up on Sunday, did the same thing, and I'm drained by the time stream comes on Monday because I it's all I did for an entire two days. It's you have to take breaks and take care of yourself because it's very easy to get caught up and burn out. So just make sure that I'm, I'm about to dive into a new point. Make sure you take breaks and that you, you block time for breaks. Like I have, I'm not going to show you guys cause you would think that I was a serial killer, but I have a, <laughs> I have a planner and I actually have blocked time off for what I'm going to do mm-hmm. Like in, in different, it's like color coded and there's cool stickers, but I have, so I have it blocked off. So I know like, Stream is from 10 to 4. I video edit from, um, you know, like 4 to 6. And I visit other streams from 6 to 9. And I have to block off my time so I know when to stop. And I know that, like, in that time, you know, Anthony comes home from work and then he'll sit up here and do his thing. But we always have time together at the end of the night regardless. So I have to, you, you have to block and schedule time. And I know it sounds crazy because a lot of people think, oh, you stream, you sit at home and you play video games. No. Nope. Nope. I, do a lot of things. <laughs> I forget to pee sometimes, and I don't eat dinner. I can't, I can't stress enough how important it is to take breaks. God, I that went from of, like regular volume to just instant, like, like just so so furious, so fast. That was amazing. Oh my god, I'm sorry for interrupting. That just no, you're fine. That was gold. Cool. I, just, I just, I can't. <laughs> I <laughs> that, that was awesome. I know that so, uh, Sodomi. I know that you were just t- uh, showing me um, that you schedule out your time as well, just like Jambo was saying. Which, yeah, uh, I do. Um, I don't keep to it at as much as I should, but I think because I just started doing it, and I've also learned not to guilt not to guilt myself because I do that a lot. The minute I'm very, I give myself high standards, but I give myself no time to execute on those high standards. That's something I do did a lot. So now. Um, I'm learning to not guilt myself. I think a lot of people also do that too, where especially people who want to be more workaholic or feel like they're lazy. I feel like I'm super lazy. I guess people talk to me like, you work a lot, you do a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. But to me, it doesn't feel that way. And again, your perception of yourself is never the same as other people's perception of yourself because you see your own picture and they see their picture, what they see and what came with their life. So, and back to blocking off time. Yeah, once I started blocking off time, I noticed I got a lot of things done and I helped not forget a lot of things. Like for instance, the way um my schedule is set up right now, I would show you guys, but I have my work schedule and I don't want to, you know, get shot at work again. So we'll just <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> yeah. So essentially, I block off like four hours before I go to work of just like a video idea or a Twitter post I'm going to be making. Like for this week, I have a mixer video I'm going to put out sometimes Sunday night. Yeah, Sunday night. And I'll put a Twitter thread on it on Saturday morning promoting the video as well, basically on how I think Mixer is doing a really good job with their marketing, even though, you know, they have no market share in comparison to any of the other players right now. So I, 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 I definitely believe that blocking off time is everyone should do it. If you're a streamer, viewer, if you're just, if you, if you want to improve your life in any way, shape or form, if yep. you, and once you do that, you start noticing what you spend your time on. Cause yeah. I've noticed I spent a lot of time just doing nothing i couldn't even tell you what i did with the time i would do nothing probably sit here and like read twitter i just scroll on twitter for four hours straight and just nothing gets done and i feel so bad but now especially at the last week doing my schedule then noticing that how much time i've done or sorry how much i've gotten done just by blocking my time is op i think everyone should do it and if you want yeah. a guide i can give you guys a guide i have a guide i actually have written out i'm sure jamal prize has a better one I just started doing this. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet, but I do recommend everyone give it a try. Yeah, do it up. Put it, uh, put it right in the chat. Do it up. So, uh, I, mean, yeah, I know we it. have Britt waiting for a question, so I don't yep. want to like take oh, up yeah. too much more because I know he's been waiting for a really long time. Yep. But talking about posting content on other platforms, um, the biggest one that I've been thinking about and like trying to jump my way back into more and to use is YouTube. And mm -hmm. I want to know, how do you guys think about scheduling your videos? Because I, I don't think the way that my brain works and my thought process is, I don't think a video should go live at the same time I'm streaming. Agreed. If that makes sense. So how do you guys do that scheduling? Is it like, do you do like three videos a week? And it's like, this one comes out right after my stream is over, jump over there and watch it. Or is it, how, how do you kind of do, do that and think about that process? So, and mind you, this is just me talking what I think, my opinion, maybe not direct fact, the precursor. But I think that, of course, like you said, you don't want to compete with yourself as much as possible. But at the same time, people can always go back and watch a video. Mm -hmm. So, and YouTube videos last way longer than a Twitter post. They last way longer than a stream does, way longer than a stream. So, I think ideally, as long as you're consistent with the time, and it doesn't conflict with too much. I think maybe if you said to go live an hour before you end stream, maybe this way it's live, so you can like you know promote it during you can do a CTA um, during stream and during like it. before a break, and then link it. And then as you're getting off before your before your raid or after the raid, or sorry before the raid, you can just link it that way, and people can go check that out afterwards. Or they're keeping their minds open a tab, go join the raid, and then they board the raid like people do. They will go watch it then. There you go. Uh, Jambo, do you have anything on this one? So I don't do YouTube full on yet. Um, I'm still trying to master my schedule with Twitter and, um, and streams. But um, I always, every day that we have a stream, um, I will spend those two hours after stream editing a clip from the stream we just had to post on Twitter. And I'll do that typically around six o'clock um, every day. So I'll stream from 10 to four and post a video from stream at six. And I do that Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So typically four videos. I try to even have one to upload on Wednesdays. So it's just a small clip um, every day of the week um, because I feel like it's it's really helped me grow to have, even if it's just like a 30 second thing from stream, it's enough to give people a glimpse of what goes on in the channel to come in for the next stream. And I think it just keeps a steady flow. It's a lot of work, but it, it's been very helpful to channel and community growth. Um, for me there you go uh i do want to get to the, uh well it's dirty britain now formerly known as the british avenger so we're gonna <laughs> add him to the call real quick once vince gets the scene switched over <clears throat> also i'll post that uh schedule in chat now yeah do it up have for people it also has a financial um thing to it so it's pretty nice for that as well if you want to use that Brit, what's up, man? All right, how are you guys doing? Good. Doing great. What you got for us today? So, kind of on the whole tour, like content-wise, and 
I understand what I have seen in the past was like it's mostly do with like Twitch or streaming or even gaming, but um of course I want to do something that I'm passionate about and mental health is a big something I'm really passionate about because I've dealt with depression for like mostly the four years recently and um it's just what I'm really passionate about but I haven't seen a lot of it on Twitter so I don't know how you would go about it. About mental health? Yeah on Twitter or like Instagram or anything like that. So um do you guys mind if I grab this? Yeah do it up. It's all you. Um so one one big thing I would say with um with mental health stuff is it's very important to unless you are a licensed professional um to make sure people know that you are not because there are there was something that happened last year um in summer where somebody was giving mental health advice on stream um regarding depression and um somebody having suicidal thoughts and they were not a licensed professional and that can really cause harm to not only them but also to you so i think if you're going to be posting about that it's great because i think mental health does need more recognition across social media platforms and streaming sites but definitely make sure to stay in your lane with that discussing our own experiences and what has worked for us is one thing but telling somebody else how to get better um is not the way to go about it. I would say the biggest thing that you could do is post links to where people could find help online mm -hmm. or different um, communities or different places that people could go to find what they need um, and then continue to be open and transparent about your struggles because that will help other people open up and feel comfortable discussing what they've been through because it's such a sensitive topic for so many. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, MPI, I know you probably want to say something about this, so. Yeah, um, I mean, the, the biggest thing, Jambo already said it, is make sure that you are very clear and transparent that you are not a mental health professional unless you are. And make sure that it is understood by yourself, your moderators, and your community that you're not there to tell them how to get better more to open up a discussion and talk about your personal experiences. And that is kind of where, unless you're certified, have a degree in psychology, things like that, that's kind of where we need to stop on Twitch. Um, mental health is extremely important to me. And to make, I guess, a small plug, if that's okay, Veli, um, Get in. There's there's uh, an organization that I work with and I'm on a stream team for called Heart Support. They're a nonprofit uh, organization that has their own stream. They have a huge community and a huge presence on Twitch. And if that's something that you legitimately want to be part of your stream, get in touch with those guys or get in touch with me, and I will get you in touch with Dan or Casey, and they will tell you what to do and how you can be involved with them and have their information in your stream. Um, one thing that I think is really important too, if you're ever gonna talk about mental health is to have resources readily available for multiple places. So like, obviously you're in the UK um, and there is a crisis line, a uh, suicide prevention line, things like that there, but that phone number isn't the same for someone in the U S so make sure that you have a couple different places readily available or you have, uh, the ability to get that information for someone because you're not a crisis counselor and you need to be able to get people to someone that is, um, with all of those things being said, don't, feel like you can't talk about mental health on Twitch. I know that like we bombard that with like you're not a counselor, you know, you're not trained on these things. So it sounds like we're telling you not to do it, but it's important. And talking about your own experiences or sharing stories of what you've gone through or maybe something that a friend has gone through that tells you it's okay to share that information is so helpful. Like to talk about heart support again, the whole reason it was founded is the singer of the band August Burns Red would meet people at shows and they would be like, dude, your music saved my life. And or like this connection is saving my life that you feel this way and I feel this way. And 
that anyway, why don't I do more about this? And that's how a whole nonprofit was founded, basically, is just like minded people came together and said, I'm not okay, you're not okay. That's okay. I know that someone out there is also struggling with addiction, with anxiety, depression, uh, whatever it is, someone else out there is going through it. And that is the biggest thing is to make sure people know that they're not alone in their struggles, that what they're feeling is 100% valid, even though it may not feel like it is. And that there are resources and ways to get help. I may not be that person, but I can tell you that it's okay that you're not okay. And here's where we can go from here. And being able to say that is huge. Like too many people on Twitch want to say, well, I'm a mental health advocate, so I'm going to fix everybody. No, you're not. You're not going to. So stop it. (laughs) Keep just make a command even that just says help. And it's a list of here's all the phone numbers you can call when you need it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Like that is the biggest thing that you can have for someone because you can't force someone to get help but you can give them everything they need to do it and then they're able to do it because Mm -hmm. there's so many people who don't know how to do it. They don't know the phone numbers to call. They don't know the people to contact. They don't know the place to go. And that's all it takes is information. Not like Sonomi says, knowledge is power, man. Having that knowledge to give to someone is can change someone's life dramatically, whether it saves their life or just tells them like, yeah, going through some depression and uh, I need to talk to a doctor so that I can continue to work or I can continue to do what I love. It doesn't matter. Just having that stuff there is so important. So that's a long rant and just kind of the uh, the general advice that I would give. There you go. Sodomi, you got anything on this one? Y'all said it better than I could even articulate. So thank yep. you. Yep. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> uh, it, like they, they touched on some really important things. Uh, obviously, I don't need to reiterate anything that they just discussed. Um, but Bray, I hope we were able to answer your question for you. Do you have any further questions on this? Uh, do you mind us a bit different one? Yeah, do it up, man. Um, so, of course, there's a lot of difference between like hyperactive NG streamers to compare to what I am is like kind of low chill streamer. And honestly, there is a difference between, um, you could correct me wrong on this, um, like the growth between like the high NG to the low NG. And of course, it does make me why, like, if I go through like five, six years, or how many like hours, years I go through like streaming this, but it's just was me, it's just not going to plan out because I'm not high enough NG for certain people on Twitch or streaming. I don't think that there's anything wrong with not being a high energy streamer. There's content that, like, the chill content could be consumed by so many people. Like there's, there's so many people out there that there's, there's just so much different content that you can put out and people will still watch it. As long as you're just being yourself and you're just putting out the best content that you can and constantly trying to better yourself as a streamer and as a person, I think that's really what matters. Like it, like, yeah, it might not like, you might not be growing fast enough. Um, but like Twitch is not a sprint at all. You know what I mean? Twitch is a Twitch is a marathon. You have to be able to grind it out every day and know that like, yeah, maybe I'm not getting the numbers that I that I would like to see, but it's not necessarily about the numbers. It's more about are you having fun or putting out content that the putting out the content that you're currently doing? Are you enjoying every day? Are you making like are you happy with what you're doing? It doesn't matter if other people aren't really showing up or if more people aren't showing up each day, the people that are there, are you improving their day the best that you can? You know what I mean? Um, uh, Jambo, what do you have on this one? Yeah, I'm, I, I kind of feel the, the same way. There's different kinds of content for different kinds of people. And um, as long as you're doing what's true to you and what you enjoy, um, you'll find success in what, in what you love to do and your comfortability. Um, don't worry about what other people are doing. Worry about you and what you want to do. And that will draw people in um, all in due time, man. It's a grind. Um, and it's all about, it's all about time. Nothing happens 
as fast as any of us would like, but enjoy the journey while you're doing it and while you're doing it, how you choose to. Mm -hmm. That's huge. MPI. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you guys both kind of nailed it on the head, man. Like there's different content for everybody. It's why there's, you know, so many different genres of music, why there's so many different genres of books, movies, TV shows. There's so many different sports out there. Like, I mean, Sodomi, I know is a soccer fan. I'm not a soccer fan, but I sure love American football, but that may not be what Sodomi likes. And that's cool. We all like different stuff. It's, mm -hmm. It's just like everything else in the world, man. Nobody is the same. Everybody has their own tastes and interests, and that's fine. And I don't think in the long run, because like everyone is saying, Twitch is the long game, man. Like it, it is not it. Sure, there are a few people who are going to be like a flash in the pan. And one month they're huge on Twitch. They make a bunch of money. And then you literally never hear of or see them again because whatever reason fell apart. It's the Internet. Anything can go viral at any time. but. I would never focus on that being a successful plan because that's not a successful plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're making extremely high energy content and you're starting to see growth, you're starting to see more subs, more whatever it might be. But at the end of your stream, you like you turn it off and then you just sit back in your chair and you're just like, oh, I'm going to have to do that again tomorrow, aren't I? That's not going to be sustainable either because you're not going to be happy. It, you're going to hate it and you're going to start to hate streaming and then you're going to start mm -hmm. to hate Twitch and then you might just start to hate your office and you don't even want to look at that room anymore because all it reminds you is how high energy you're going to have to be tomorrow when really all you want to do is like kind of kick back, you know, sip on a cup of tea, coffee, whatever it is and, you know, just have fun with people and it's it, streamer burnout is a thing like I see in chat. Yep. And if you're making content that you don't like to make and you're not having fun with, you're going to hit that wall a million times faster than mm -hmm. just being tired because you've been working really hard making what you love. Absolutely. If you start doing things just for the sake of numbers, it doesn't turn in, it doesn't stay streaming. It doesn't stay as something fun that you enjoy yeah. doing. It turns into the day-to-day -day grind of a real job which is not something that this should ever be close to. You don't want this to become like, gotta go to the office today, you know, gotta, you know, gotta suck it up at work, you know, cause I need, mm -hmm. I need to do this or this or whatever. I don't really like what I'm doing, but like you, you, you don't want it to become that. It has to be from a place of enjoyment. You have to really do, you have to really feel passionate about what you're doing. And if you end the day, like MPI was saying, thinking that, oh man, I got to do this again tomorrow. Like that's, that's the wrong attitude for sure. Can't yeah, and I think numbers, you can't focus on any of that. Yeah. yeah. And I think if that's what it starts to become to you, you have two options. And especially if you're someone who's pursuing this as a, um, you have two options at that point, step back and figure out why you feel that way and what you can change. Or at that point, dude, I might as well go back into sales and make like 10 times the money I'm making now. If not, more. Right. I mean, right. if I'm going to be miserable, no matter what, I might as well be getting some of it. But mm -hmm. as soon as, streaming becomes that every day where you're like i hate this or just like i don't want to do it tomorrow or the next day or ever again what why are you doing it anymore you know yeah. and i think like there there's enough of that out there already with real jobs as people call them um or office jobs sales jobs whatever it might be and if that's what you're looking for then you can get one of those but if you want streaming to be your career man do what you love and sure look at the numbers and look at kind of like what what might be a better option if you're like between two games like both of these i would love to play maybe look at one and see well this game is doing a little bit better than this one but don't focus solely on that if that makes sense mm -hmm. like if it is a career you do have to look at facts statistics and some numbers some but if you're miserable with the numbers that you're getting because of the way you're getting there, it's it's not worth it, dude. Absolutely. So Domi, we gotta be ending here real quick. So I'll keep it short. Just yeah. literally listen to everything everyone else has said. Because they said it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Britt. Uh did, were you able to answer your question for you, man? Yes, thank you. Yeah. you. Not a problem, man. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for calling in, my dude. Me too. So Take it easy, man. All right. So that is the last question and the last topic we'll be talking about today. So Jambo, 
once again, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it having you. Absolutely. Uh, uh, one more time, where can people find you and why should they find you? Uh, you can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash Udipu. Um, <laughs> You're welcome for that. Let's play with Jambo. Okay. I, uh, I expect my royalty checks in the mail from that name. Yeah, you'll get one penny every time it's said. <laughs> I'll take um, it. Yeah, you can find me at twitch.tv slash play with Jambo. Um, live Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Central to 4 p.m. Central. I almost said Eastern. Central. It's the same time zone when I start and when I end. Um, <laughs> right now we're playing through Star Wars, but we play through a lot of RPGs and um, we get about 20 minutes of gameplay in every six hour stream. So <laughs> that's what you're into. Also, it's not my birthday. So it's always her birthday. It's happy birthday, Jambo. Uh, I can't I believe call? we didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> you don't. Um, <laughs> MPI, where can people find you and why should they find you? Uh, yeah, so you can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all the places. Uh, it's Mr. Pure Instinct. Um, you can find me pretty much any day on any of those places. Um, we play a variety of games. Right now we're playing Skyrim for the first time. So if you are a Skyrim fan and you want to see somebody struggle through it for the first time, I'm your guy. I'm already not great at video games, so <laughs> check it out. Uh, we talk a lot about mental health stuff, too, and enjoy a lot of coffee together and just have a, a, a community where everyone is welcome and everybody tries to have a good time. Awesome. Sodomi, you know it. Perfect. Uh, everyone, I've been Sodomi, your homie. <laughs> And you can find me at twitch.tv slash Sodomi and on YouTube at Sodomi as well. But on Twitter, I'm Sodomi TV because, you know, Twitter is uh, fickle. But uh, I will be live at 2 p.m. today, an hour from now. And we're talking about uh, Mixer. Get ready for that video I want to post uh, this weekend. So if you want more information on that, I'll see you in about an hour. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm Veloc underscore TV. I play a lot of first person shooter games on Twitch. It's Veloc underscore TV on Twitch, Twitter instagram all the things thanks again everybody for for coming in and hanging out asking us questions uh thanks for listening for all the listeners really appreciate you guys have a great day we'll see you next week sodomi bye forever what is it <laughs> bye forever and blaze it all right.